What's going on world? Today is an excellent day. Check that out. Before we get into the three must haves of making a good video, I wanna do something kind of epic to celebrate that 100K. I think it would be kind of cool if I have like an explosion go off behind me and I throw confetti in the air. I'm trying to collect everything I need to get this shot before I cross over 100,000, but you guys are just subbing too fast. Slow down a little bit. All right, got the stuff I need to make this shot happen. Nine, 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 nine. Mm-hmm. Yo! Dylan, aren't you excited? Yeah, generally. We are currently setting up the super slow-mo shots. Here's kind of the frame right here. An explosion is gonna go out behind me. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do it because I know someone is gonna try to do it and you're gonna make your mom very upset. We're gonna do a test run with a small explosion real quick. Oh! <laughs> oh, that scared me. How do you look? <laughs> That's pretty cool. I felt the flames crawl up the back of my neck, so I'm like, this is gonna burn all my hair off. What we hope for is the explosion will go off. It'll look really cool in super slow motion. I'm gonna set this thing off right when it happens, and then these two balloons also get popped just to add a little bit more dramatic effect, and then all the confetti comes back down. I think this goes without saying, but do not do this at home. Even though it doesn't look like it, we actually kind of know what we're doing, and we have a fire marshal on set to take care of anything in case anything goes wrong. Yeah. Dylan, where's your fire extinguisher? Somewhere. Here goes nothing. Okay, I was gonna try to keep. I was gonna try to keep a cool face. I could not. Fire! Okay, I'm pretty sure that came out awesome. I was gonna try to keep a cool face the whole time. It did not happen. As soon as I picked up my tube, I realized I was holding it upside down. So I was like, oh shoot. And I was like rotating it back. See, look, I'm like right there. I'm like, oh shoot. And I'm like, oh, I gotta rotate it. This might be the proudest moment of my YouTube career so far. Since we have everything set up, we're just gonna do it again. Smaller version with Dylan and Carrie as well. <laughs> You think I could do it and my hair's not gonna catch on fire? Uh, you never know. If you see me with a shorter haircut next time, you'll know why. So this balloon managed to survive all these explosions. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. This is seriously unreal, guys. I think they say that too much of this is bad for your brain. Probably. <laughs> Besides the serious risk of lung damage, you can end up with bubbles of helium in the arteries that lead to your brain. This can lead to stroke-like symptoms and of course, death. I think sucking that helium is the most dangerous thing we did today. Don't set off explosions in your own apartment, but definitely <laughs> don't inhale helium out of a balloon like we just did. Well, on that note, let's move on to the three requirements for making a good video. I hope I don't die. Now to me, there are three golden rules to making good videos. Number one is the content you're filming. Whatever's in front of the camera, if it's not interesting, no amount of work is gonna make people wanna watch it. And later we're gonna do a deep dive into this on what makes good content. How do you know if your content's interesting? What is a story? What makes a story interesting, all those things we're gonna get into later. Number two is audio. It is a requirement to make a successful video. A nice camera is a nice to have. You don't have to have a nice camera. For example, let's say I turn off this light. Doesn't look as nice, but hey, you can still generally see me and we're still talking. Like you still can feel like you're engaged to this video. You're still paying attention to me even though this light sucks. PewDiePie, love him or hate him, he still has more subscribers than all of us. And the video quality sucks, but audio spot on. So so hey, I got my light back on and let's turn it over. Let's say I have really bad audio, then you know, there's only so much you can watch me before you're gonna wanna shoot yourself in the face. It's just unbearable. There's just a huge level of discomfort that comes 
from having really, really bad audio in a video. Number three is super, super important. Most of the time when people come to me and say like, hey, my videos just aren't doing that well or I'm not getting YouTube subscribers or whatever, do better editing. Usually their minds go straight to like, oh, special effects or titles or graphics and stuff like that. If you guys have noticed, I've never had some special graphic titles come in or special effects or even an opening title sequence. All those things are just nice to have, but the requirement is a good edit. And what I mean by this good edit is timing. A really, really good edit should be invisible. It shouldn't even be noticed, but it's a thing that every single person feels. You know, it's very much like rhythm in music. You know, you have a certain pace that everyone goes at, and then when you want the energy to start going up, you just speed it up a little bit, and then all of a sudden everything feels a little bit more intense. And if you wanna bring it down and down, then it becomes something a lot more softer and gentle. Just like rhythm in music, if it's just a fraction of a second off, it throws off the whole thing. And the problem I see all the time is when people are editing their sequence, they think about, oh, this shot goes first, this shot goes second, and they don't spend the time to go back and polish up that edit and the timing and the rhythm. A majority of the time, your cuts are just too loose. Throughout the course, we're gonna be doing a deep dive and we're gonna look at editing styles of super successful channels and why they edit at the tempo they do. And the thing that everybody has in common, love him or hate him, is that their editing is spot on. Now I want you guys to meet Nimrod. He recently commented on one of my videos and he said his goal was to get more subscribers. He's only 14 years old, but don't underestimate him. I'm gonna go through one of his videos and try to point out ways to improve his edit. After editing a lot of these videos, like this video that you're watching right now, when I'm going through and editing this video, I'm not even looking at this footage to edit these videos. I'm actually looking at the sound wave. A lot of it is because it helps me skip through all the dead space. Like if I'm not talking, then I don't even have to look at that footage because I can see on my Premiere timeline that there's nothing there. So I just skip past all that. And it also helps me visually look at timing. So let's look at one scene from this birthday vlog real quick. Good morning. Today we're going to celebrate my birthday. It's Saturday today and tomorrow is my birthday, the 3rd of December. We are at a gas station, about to go. So I'm gonna load up that scene into my premiere. I'm gonna re-edit it the way I would have edited it. So let's get started. He turns on the camera and he starts talking right here. And you can see by that audio waveform right there, that's his talking point. So I'll go maybe one or two frames back and we'll start there. Good morning. Today Pause right there, see all that? Start there, he starts talking here. So all that right there, we don't really need. And how long was that? That was 23 frames, so that's almost a second. Second doesn't sound like a long time, but in the editing world, it is. Good morning, today we're going to celebrate my birthday. Saturday today. Okay, so there's another pause here. Ideally, when you're recording these, you'll eventually learn to cut them out while you're recording. So you think in bursts. You like speak to the camera for a burst and then take a pause and then think about what you're gonna say next. Then speak again for another burst and then take a break. But here you can kind of tell that he's talking. There's a moment of thinking. What am I gonna say next? Then he says it and then another pause. And again, these are things that take training. TV hosts train for years perfecting this. Some people are just naturally brilliant at talking. I am not that person. The only reason why you think I can speak somewhat somewhat in a decent somewhat in a decent way is because of all the editing. See that last bit? I didn't edit that bit. See that last bit? I'm not editing any of this so you guys can see what it looks like when I don't do any editing. But it's 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 there's a there's a lot of pauses, there's a lot of ums and and a lot of me thinking about what it is, but I cut all that out. That's why you think I'm smarter than I actually am. Today we're going to celebrate my birthday. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it out here after he says birthday. It's Saturday today and tomorrow is my birthday, the 30th of December. See, right there, that whole sequence here, it's Saturday today and tomorrow is my birthday, blah, blah, blah. You can probably cut that down a little bit. You don't have to explain that today is Saturday. So Saturday let's pull some out. And 
tomorrow is my birthday. Another thing to keep in mind is that this is the intro to the video. The first 20 to 30 seconds of the video, very crucial. So let's just cut that part out. Probably not too many people care that it's Saturday. You don't want to leave anything in there unless it's crucial. Once you have a following or once people are already engaged in the video, then you can start dragging it out and saying a few more things that may not be super interesting, but first 20, 30 seconds, super important. Keep everything in that first chunk interesting. So let's just cut that bit out. Break my birthday, we're at a gas station. About to go. Okay, so see all that silence right there? I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to tell us where you are, and then you want to show us this tank behind you. I imagine there's gas in there or something. I don't know. You're gonna have to excuse my ignorance. Now, there's a way to compress this. We can basically take this. About to go. About to go. We're about to go. We can take that audio, remove the video of it, and we can basically go from this scene. At a gas station. And you're no longer in frame here. So we can literally do whatever we want with the audio. So we can take the audio from what you're saying here at the end, drop it right in here. We're at a gas station, about to go. See that? So now you're showing what you want to show while compressing time. There is no need to talk to the camera, then show the item in silence, and then come back and talk to the camera again. You can just condense that down. So this original sequence here was 15 seconds. And with what I've done, it is now down to six. So less than half, almost a third I cut out and I just condensed it. It's all about compressing time that you don't need. So again, here's the before. Good morning! Today we're going to celebrate my birthday. It's Saturday today and tomorrow is my birthday, the 30th of December. We are at a gas station. About to go. Cutting out those pauses and kind of mixing the audio and visuals a little bit. Here's what it looks like. Good morning! Today we're going to celebrate my birthday. We are at a gas station. About to go. Boom. Just like that, you already got the same message across. It's your birthday, you're ready to go, you're at a gas station, or I think it's a gas station, and then you're out, you can go straight into whatever you wanna show. Trust me, keeping people around for that first 30 seconds is the hardest part of the video, so put extra attention into that first 30 seconds and really just cool out everything that doesn't need to be there. Another thing to always keep in mind is that everybody starts off watching your video at the beginning. The goal now is to keep them around for as long as possible. If you lose a majority of your viewers at the beginning of the video, that tells YouTube that this video cannot keep people's attention. So at that point, YouTube will not promote this video. It won't show up in search results. It won't show up in suggested. All the algorithms out there are looking for videos that can keep attention. So I suggest putting the excitement exciting, interesting stuff as early as possible to hook the audience. For example, some of these rad flips. I totally get the mentality of saving some of the best footage for the end, but in the YouTube world, if you don't hook them early, they won't stick around to the end. So one of the exercises I highly recommend, next time you finish a video and you're about to hit that upload button, stop and then go back to the video and then cut it down by 30%, maybe even half. It's harder than it sounds to do. There's a lot of times when you're like, oh, I really wanna leave the scene in because of this. But being a good editor is about being ruthless. You just chop everything out that doesn't need to be there. And then once you're done with it, take a look at that shorter one and most of the time you'll look at it and be like wow this actually surprisingly still tells the story I want in a much tighter fashion oh and oh my gosh do you guys remember this net neutrality video oh, not only is he a cringe tard but look at the timing of this edit yes got them bulk deal and fidget spinners yes those eclipse glasses are so cheap God, that kills me. That's like 17 to 20 frames in between cuts. <laughs> and sure, I think we all have come to know and accept that YouTubers always jump cut all the time, but this isn't just a thing for YouTubers. Everybody compresses time. They're just better at concealing it. You can conceal a jump cut between cuts like this. Obviously, there's a lot of time being compressed every time this camera is going in and out. That is one of the benefits of 4K is because you can jump in and out of the same frame and really helps to conceal a cut. 
and good editors can make it so you can't even tell that they're compressing time, but I can tell you for a fact that here they are. They're driving through my neighborhood and I can tell every time they skip forward a couple blocks. This apartment, it's in the background of this video. I live right in this building here. Please don't figure out where that is and come track me down. Also, I don't live in the nicest neighborhood. I've never been down here and I'm terrified. And the timing is different depending on the energy. For example, when they want the energy to be high and fast, they are cutting it tight and tight. And when they're just doing a little powwow, they kind of keep it a little bit looser and relaxing. But remember that every single frame counts. Don't be leaving out like 20 frame pauses in the middle of your video for no reason. Anyways, hope this video was useful to some of you. And I guess I'll be seeing some of you guys in the full course. Link in description, shameless plug. I'm out, done. So come on, let's get started. Yeah.